Up to you, Mike. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks everyone for having me here, especially uh, the hosts of, uh, of the day from Crypto World Souk. My name is Mike Taylor, I'm from Modem. I'm the Director of Communications and Marketing there. And what I'm gonna be talking to you about today is securing your supply chain with blockchain technology. So if, I, if anyone in the, uh, the back has trouble hearing me, just give me a little signal and I'll raise my voice again. Um, to sort of set some expectations for the day, I want to say that I'm not a supply chain expert. And in fact, no one in Modem really is. What we are is a group of engineers and developers that came together asking some really big questions about what emerging technologies could do. And what we came up with was a really specific use case for the pharmaceutical supply chain. So how many people here have heard of Modem before? <coughs> nice, lots of people. Does anyone have mod tokens? Excellent. So the question to the mod token holders, can you guys explain what Modem does? Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Modem combines uh, yeah, the sensors with the blockchain technology. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, research what you're investing in, I guess, is, is the moral there. <laughs> um, my post-it, I never heard that term before uh, 30 seconds ago. My post-it would be for Modem. Um, Modem combines IoT sensors to, uh, and blockchain technology to provide data integrity for transactions involving physical products. So while we have the ambition to monitor supply chains in all sectors, what we're really focused on right now is temperature monitoring in pharmaceutical supply chains to help pharma distributors achieve GDP compliance. I'll explain more about compliance later, but first I want to talk to you guys about, oh, Luca told me to skip these slides because he made me feel like I didn't have enough time. There's some fun modem slides. We're gonna go right into supply chains though. Um, I want to talk to you about how we at Modem talk about supply chains. So when we started in 2016, blockchain in supply chain was already a really hot topic. But if we use Google Trends as any barometer, we can see it's only gotten more popular over the past year. We at Modem have maintained a really simple definition of what a supply chain is. For us, it's about the flow of physical goods, money, and data. And we think this is a really great place for the blockchain to play because uh, obviously there's lots of money at stake, there's lots of data to be, uh, to be uh, harvested, and very rarely in a supply chain is there uh, a central authority to oversee all the parties involved and provide trust. So when we were developing our first, uh, our first product, we, we thought that there were really three challenges that all supply chains face regardless of, uh, regardless of sector. Those are costs, contamination, and compliance. So first and foremost, cost is almost always a consideration. Um, according to a McKinsey report in 2010, very rarely are the lean techniques used in manufacturing also deployed in warehousing and transportation. So in industries from pharma to tech to chemical, uh, shipping costs can be anywhere from two to 10% of revenues. Similarly, contamination is a growing concern for almost every sector. A really great example is the consumer luxury goods market. So according to Economist report from 2015, if we had taken all of the counterfeit goods seized at the US border, um, they would have been worth 1.2 billion had they been authentic. Lastly, we have compliance. This is a growing concern in a number of industries, especially across Europe. Regulations such as good vigilance practice, good manufacturing practice, and good distribution practice, that's the GDP I was talking about earlier, um, they all have implications on the supply chain. According to Deloitte 2017, they have said that national regulations, <coughs> industry compliance, um, commercial compliance, uh, industry obligations, all of these things come together and have really severe impacts on uh, an industry's ability to fulfill uh, its supply chain. So that said, it's clear that blockchain has a role in the supply chain. If there's a growing interest for it, a lot more people are talking about it. Additionally, there's some really simple problems that, we, that uh, need to be solved and addressed and aren't really being looked at. So to provide some context, obviously Modem is not alone in taking on these problems. And before I get into what Modem's doing, I want to talk a little bit about what two other companies are doing. So in no way am I affiliated with these companies, but I think they provide really good, clear use cases and provide some context for what Modem has taken on. So the first problem being taken on by a company called PharmaTrust is counterfeit drugs. So counterfeit drugs obviously is a problem that affects 
thousands of people each year. We imagine this to be primarily in emerging economies and developing nations. But according to a Pfizer study, Western Europeans spend more than 14 billion a year on illicit, illicitly sourced drugs. This is becoming more and more common because we have things like uh, online pharmacies that allow illicit materials to enter legitimate supply chains. So what PharmaTrust is doing is working on something called serialization. This not only provides a, uni a unique serial number, but ensures collaboration between all of the parties in the supply chain to make sure that serial number is traced from end to end. So according to their diagrams here, basically what they're doing is making sure that each party in the supply chain is, is uh, writing a transaction to the Ethereum blockchain, which will empower the end user to trace back the origin of their own product and make sure it's legitimate. The second really interesting uh, use case comes from a company called Cargo X, and these guys are taking on uh, the bill of lading in the uh, commercial shipping industry. So this is the diagram they use to explain the status quo. What they say here is basically a bill of lading for anyone who uh, doesn't know how this works. The carrier who's shipping the goods overseas produces this and sends it to the exporter. Upon receipt of payment, the exporter then delivers this by express courier to an importer. The importer, when the goods arrive, then takes this to the carrier that generated the bill of lading and redeems it for their product. So needless to say, this is an annoying analog process. Um, it's been estimated that a large freight forwarder would print more than 4 million sheets of paper a year to generate these bill of lading, spending almost 80 million a year to print and deliver these documents. So it's costly, it's not secure. Um, it's a little bit, just a little bit out of date. But um, electronic bill and ladings have been attempted before, but where they've really struggled to take off is that they, they can't really go anywhere without a centralized authority to oversee <coughs> how they work. So what Cargo X is endeavoring to do is to create a tokenized <coughs> bill of lading, to create a smart bill of lading that can be transferred on a decentralized app. So it can be generated by the carrier, sent to the exporter, automatically sent to the importer when a, really, when a payment has been made, and then again redeemed with the same carrier. This allows much more security in the flow of information and who's holding uh, that data. Data and, in this case, also ownership for these physical products. Um, so now I'll get into what Modem's doing. Uh, again, like I said, we're working specifically on the pharmaceutical supply chain. When we began, we identified two really key problems in pharma logistics that we wanted to take on. These were GDP compliance and last mile uh, distribution. So first, GDP compliance, I've said this a few times already today, and I'll explain what it is finally. Um, it's a regulation that was rewritten in 2013 and came into effect in Switzerland in 2016. It requires that pharma distributors um, ensure temperature conditions are maintained within acceptable limits during transport for medicinal products for human use. Additionally, it requires that distributors be able to demonstrate that the medicines have not been exposed to conditions that may affect their quality or efficacy. So this provides a real challenge to the industry because now we need a temperature record for every single medicine being used from end to end, from, from the manufacturer all the way to the end user. As you can imagine, this becomes particularly challenging in what we call last mile distribution. So this is... Uh, when the product has reached the distributor, it is now being sent to the end user or the dispensary. So in the, case of in the case of pharmaceuticals, this could be a doctor, a hospital, a pharmacy, or if an online pharmacy is involved, this could be the end user themselves. So in the European Union, each year, about 200 million shipments, including pharmaceutical products, are sent. And 90% of these happen within this last mile. So these are really, really high volume shipments happening between a, not, a wide network of recipients. And they're usually containing products of very low value, so often as little as one single packet of drugs. That makes the active cooling transport that's typically used by the industry between manufacturer and distributor, like refrigerated trucks, really difficult to deploy at the scale of the shipment, at the scale of this packet. So what do we do? How do we make sure that GDP requirements are being fulfilled from end to end at the scale of a packet. It's a really challenging problem to solve when we consider the solutions that are on the market today. So previously, GDP requirements asked pharma distributors to do spot checks on their shipments. This meant that the conventional USB loggers on the market could be programmed manually, left in a packet, 
could monitor shipments, and then the data could be um, exported as a PDF and uh, sent to regulators. At scale, these products don't really work. Um, they're very simple and straightforward to use. They're a really solid, trustworthy product. But programming them manually means that it adds hours of time to a, to a logistics process, to a packer's processing. Additionally, the data handling is very cumbersome because we're exporting PDFs from USBs for every single shipment. So what Modem decided the market needed was a solution that combined both blockchain and IoT to create data integrity and authenticity, so immutable data that could be secure for auditing purposes and also be proven to its source, with easy data, data handling, and finally the third point, um, provide a trusted real-world interface with environmental conditions that the packets or that the drugs are being subject to. I said this third point last because it's something that you see very seldom in a blockchain startup company. <laughs> very few blockchain, uh, blockchain startups are taking on this real-world interface. There's a lot of serialization, there's a lot of tokenization, um, there's a lot of transaction writing on the blockchain, but it's not often that you see this, this sort of digital identity of a product that's written on the blockchain being really connected with something in the real world, something like heat and temperature in the environment. So now I'll finally explain how Modem does this. So it all starts with a distributor who needs to send a packet to a dispensary. They pack uh, the pharmaceutical products with one of Modem's temperature loggers and send it on its way. While in transit, the, the logger is detecting temperature actively and storing this data locally. The first generation of our product is specifically a temperature logger for, pharmaceutical, for the pharmaceutical industry, but with each generation we're adding um, new sensing capabilities. So what's to come could be acceleration, humidity, moisture, light, anything goes. When the packet's received, the data is read out, um, sent to the, the back end where it's hashed, and that's written to the blockchain. The, Ethereum, the smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain can then be verified, and notifications can be sent to both parties that the, the shipment was received in good condition, and that the source of the data was the, the sensor that originally wrote the smart contract. So the smart contract could, on a, could, uh, could be used to automate any number of processes, and we're really excited to start taking this on. Right now, it's simply, um, simply automating these notifications, but you could imagine uh, its potential to automate a release of payment, for example, if shipping conditions were good, or a return to sender process if shipping conditions were bad. So there's a lot more potential for what the blockchain could do for this process. So the four components we use to complete this system are our data logger, our dashboard, our mobile app, and smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. So the data logger, I should have brought one today. I didn't even think of it. <laughs> this is our baby. We've been, we've been working on it for the past year. We're really excited about it. Which is made in China. <laughs> it's, made in, uh, it's actually made in Switzerland. By, the first batch has been made in Switzerland by a company called Vario Systems. Uh, it will probably most likely be mass produced in Sri Lanka. But it, uh, yeah, it can detect temperatures anywhere from 40, negative 40 to 70 degrees. It has a six week active battery life and can um, store up to 50,000 measurements. And it can be reused. Reused, that's really important, but I'll get to that. <laughs> oh, actually, I should say also, we like to call it part of a, sort of a new generation of crypto hardware. So this means that each chip, uh, each sensor, comes with its own private key. And when it signs data to the blockchain, it's doing so with, uh, with, a, with a hash and with its public key. And this is what ensures data authenticity. This, was an, this, this is how we ensure that uh, a sensor can't be swapped out en route, or data can't be written to a blockchain from some, from some external source. Next is our dashboard. This is a really useful tool for quality assurance teams. This is what allows us to get past the cumbersome nature of those USB temperature lockers. Here, a quality assurance team could pre-program all of their products with the required temperature thresholds so that when the packing team activates a sensor, they simply scan the sensor and scan the product's shipping ID. They're immediately um, connected, and the sensor knows um, the alarm criteria to set for the given temperature threshold. Thirdly, we have our mobile app. 
So the mobile app can be used by the sender to connect and activate the sensor with the product, but it can also be used by the receiver to perform a readout and receive the product. The scanning device that the app's installed on is what connects the logger to the internet and allows the data set to be written to the block or written first to the back end and eventually signed to the blockchain. So it's, it might sound a little complicated, but it's actually really simple. This is how it works. It starts with the quality assurance team. They set the alarm criteria. The packers down who are, who are fulfilling the orders pack a sensor with some product and send it on its way. At this point, the smart contract has been created. <clears throat> en route, the sensor is actively detecting um, temperature data, storing it locally. When it's received, it can be uh, the shipment ID on the outside of the box can be scanned by either the receiver or a third-party logistics provider. The box, does, the box does not need to be opened uh, to do a readout. You don't have to scan the sensor. You can simply scan the shipment ID. Um, the sensor connects through the scanning device, writes the data, fulfills the smart contract, and all the data comes back to the dashboard for the, uh, for the quality assurance team to analyze. So lastly, the fourth component that I didn't mention yet, the smart contract. Uh, that's what everyone's here to talk about, right? So probably one of the best questions we get is why does this need the blockchain? And I like to answer that in four, four reasons. We could probably come up with some more, but four key reasons why we need the blockchain. The first, is, the first one has to do with integration. <laughs> and that's what I talked about earlier, this, uh, the potential for smart contracts to automate these processes within the supply chain. So to release payments, to initiate return to sender processes. Um, we think there's a lot of potential in using the blockchain, or using smart contracts specifically, um, to streamline the interaction between parties within the logistics process. Most importantly though, I would say, is the provision of data authenticity and integrity. So because of the way the crypto hardware is developed, this hash, this private key, we can ensure that uh, the data is coming from the correct source. But almost more importantly is that we can provide data integrity. So when we write the data to a backend, whether it's with our customer or with modem, this data is then hashed, and the hash is what's written to the blockchain. So in case of an audit, um, a regulator could come to a client site, pick some data sets in question, <coughs> hash them, and then search the Ethereum blockchain for this hash. So this can ensure that regardless of how the client is handling data, they don't have to develop their own external method for protecting the data's immutability. The blockchain can do that for them. And this is what leads to our last point, the flexibility of data ownership and management. So because of this sort of level of blockchain security that we can offer our customers, they're much more free to develop their own ways of handling data that aren't uh, overly concerned with uh, security, security risks. So we're almost right on time. So now that you know how it works, I'm just gonna wrap up by saying how we market this solution and where we wanna go with it. Um, so we like to say that we're selling GDP compliance as a service. And this is where these reusable sensors come in. So we're not selling um, physical sensors, we're not selling sensors or licensing them, we're licensing software. What we like to say is we're selling pharma-approved documentation. So in case of an audit, we're providing you with a solution that allows you to fulfill regulatory requirements. And we do this by giving you a complete package with reusable sensors and charging you on a per shipment basis. So our value proposition is really like a plug-and-play <coughs> solution that we can integrate in a step-by-step -step method and scale that solution within your organization to fulfill whatever your GDP requirement needs are. In addition to this, through the dashboard, we like to say that we're providing, or we don't like to say, our clients have told us that the wealth of temperature data that we're able to offer them has given them a lot of insight into their business processes and helped them to optimize their logistics process. So again, this product is designed for pharma, safe and secure, no capital expenditure. Okay, so last two slides. Um, we've talked a lot about pharma today. Obviously, this could easily segue into monitoring <coughs> for other industries. Um, we've been contacted by everything from racehorse feed, which is sensitive to humidity, to uh, uh, electronics, which are sensitive to vibra vibration, 
And this is uh, how we hope to expand in the future. So as we expand into sectors and grow our capacities within the blockchain to, to automate with trusted events and messages and help um, enhance sort of predictions and analytics, we're hoping to move towards optimizing for the concept of the autonomous parcel. So that might be a parcel that can route itself based on cost, efficiency, and the most favorable environmental conditions based on the, the data that we're able to collect and automate between parties in the supply chain through the blockchain. So hopefully that was clear. Uh, let's get some questions on the board. And my email, I'll be around all day so you guys can ask me more questions in person. But thank you, thank you for much. listening.